there's nothing more low energy than squeezing all of the juice out of a viral show. Hey, hey, that's right. I watched episode five of All Quiet on Set, and I'm going to do a review of it so that you don't have to watch it and you won't get to hear about any of the outstanding revelations that anyone else has heard. So if you missed it, I did review All Quiet on Set in our one of our previous podcasts because I, I reviewed the four episodes that were out, but it's such a viral hit as the show will tell you numerous times over and over again, that you just have to watch an episode five, you know? So what did they do? They slapped something together and gave you a bunch of crap. It's a bunch of schlock, not worth your time. You will learn nothing new and, and or interesting. But in the meantime, I am the man you may know as Z, if you like this kind of content. Give me a like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. The channel would greatly appreciate it. It goes a long way to help us out here and let's get right into it here we're gonna talk we're gonna go to deadline see what they have to say about this sh nonsense this sh -narf sh nonsense so revelations all quiet on set we learned nothing new and uh this is when it's it's a cat. It's so funny because it's about exploiting kids on television. So what do they do? Make a fifth episode that's a montage of the previous episodes, just to give you nothing because they they ain't got nothing. Uh, the, first of all, the episode is is like straight out of the eighties or nineties where they have a separate journalist interviewing other people, and look, Soledad O'Brien does her best. Uh, but it just, it's not very good, and she doesn't have any hard-hitting questions. And you get some never-before-seen footage. Wow. Oh, you know what I didn't pull? Uh, maybe I have to look this up. Well, I can just describe it to you, because it's not that important. But they bring Drake Bell back. And at first, I was like, when I first saw the Drake Bell revelations and things like that, I'm like, okay... Uh, brave guy, C congratulations. He's also in quite a bit of trouble, or at least he was. And they, they don't talk about that at all. And he kind of, he dances around the subject of, like, making poor decisions. But essentially, he got picked up for the same issues, allegedly, that he himself happened to him. Now, he didn't do anything physical, but he seemed like he was grooming some people. But they don't get into that. And uh, it's kind of weird because he goes to this whole damaging story about all these Hollywood celebrities protecting the other guy. But I, the whole time I'm thinking, like, dude, you listed yourself as John Doe. Nobody knew who you were or that you were going to be there. And then one of the things that he says completely contradicts the entire show that they're building which is the case against Dan Schneider, because they're like, Dan Schneider is a monster. Now, don't get me wrong. The guy seems like a total dirtbag and a scumbag and making you know inappropriate jokes at the expense of these kids who had no idea what it is. But again, you're talking about like the 2000s, and they're recontextualizing you know as adults what they experienced from back then, where it's just this dude making a kid show, throwing in dirty jokes. That's what, every, that's what all kid shows do, just in case you didn't notice. That's what they do. Check out SpongeBob. Check out all the, half the cartoons out there. They throw in adult jokes. Check out Looney Tunes from the 1950s. Like they all have dirt, like jokes that are adult in there. Now I'm not saying he's a good guy. I'm just saying you have no case against him. So Drake Bell speaks out, and uh, then they went into a section uh, from um, Dan released his own video apologizing. And they're, they're saying, like, oh, they want more accountability. The dude got fired and lost all of his money. It, what this really explained to me is that all celebrities, not all celebrities, but all actors in general are, I'm generalizing all these actors, they're all narcissists and only care about themselves. And they're, they're like, he, he's going to make us famous, but he didn't, and we're not famous. Well, guess what? Kenan and Kel are famous. So he made some people famous, but not everybody. He can't make everybody famous. Amanda Bynes was famous, and now she's walking around nude on the streets. So what do you think? Would you do you want to be walking around the streets nude? Like what do you 
<laughs> what are you talking about here, people? So it's like they want their cake and eat it too. Uh, the one guy reconnects with his mom. She thinks everything is racist. So whatever. And uh, someone else came from <laughs> Shane Lyons, who I didn't know who that was, came forward to to say, uh, no one touched me. <laughs> Thanks for the revelation, man. So this is what you get and a bunch of clips. So this is just an unmitigated cash grab. What a waste of everyone's time. And uh, I just want to look at the seven shocking revelations because this is from Decider. It's it's just absurd. This this is nonsense. And they should be ashamed of themselves as this is an unmitigated cash grab trying to milk all the juice out of Nickelodeon they possibly can. Uh, including the revelation about Mark Summers where... Mark Summers had already left Nickelodeon and was no longer on. There was no Double Dare. And then 10 years later came the Dan Schneider stuff. And he's like, I thought we were going to talk about like Double Dare. He's like, I don't know who these people are. What are you? <laughs> like, okay. So, you know, you're being exploitive. You are exploiting Mark Summers to show your ex how kids were exploited. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um, they tried to have. Let's go. Drake Bell says, nobody has reached out following Quiet on the, on the Set. What would you like them to do? Handwrite you apologies, my friend? You're still a criminal. <laughs> like, I just want to point that out. You pled guilty to crimes that you were that were inflicted on yourself. I don't think a lot of people are going to be writing you letters. And what should they reach out for? Like, what do you want them to say? I don't understand. He, he, and, you know, some, some of the guys admitted publicly, like, they felt bad about it. But at the time, that's what they were asked to do. So... What are you going to do? Will Friedel, I think, uh, he said, I worked, I, he even said, I worked with Will and Spider-Man. We had a lot of opportunity to apologize. How's he going to apologize when he didn't even know, like, he wasn't at the trial. He was just asked to write a letter for a guy he worked with who he, he, and some confused teen. He didn't know what was going on. Uh, the, the other revelation was Drake Bell had a special relationship with with Josh Peck. I don't I don't understand. That was not a revelation. Like they were attacking his friend and he's like the guy didn't do anything. Leave him alone. Like what do you expect these dudes to do? Become vigilantes and and go after criminals? That's what the justice system is for. Whether or not you like it, we sh shall not have vigilantes. There will be no Batman. Uh, Dan Schneider, that's not a revelation. They said this in the last episode. Dan Schneider was the only Nickelodeon person to support him on the case. Maybe, uh, you know, fat face Dan Schneider here is is not the evil monster that you think he was. Although he is a monster for taking Ozempic now, allegedly. Uh, he, he also asked Giovanni Samuels, if you watch the first four episodes, she had nothing bad to say about him. So he asked her for a quote of support, like, hey, when we worked together, did I do anything bad to you? And she's like, no, not really. Like, we had a good time on set. And she, she's like, e -e yeah, I guess. Whatever, man. So uh, it seems like everybody else was kind of trying to corner her into something bad happened. But she, during the show, she had nothing. She really had nothing bad to say. Shane Lyons asked him about blue balls. Shane Lyons came on the show. <laughs> Why they brought this guy in. This is not a revelation. And uh, spoke inappropriately to him. The man in, was showing people his hand autographed, um, the John Wayne Gacy autograph collection. That's a little more inappropriate than saying stuff about blue balls. And he basically came on to say, like, don't you feel bad for me? No one tried to molest me. I'm looking at the man and I'm wondering why. Just questions. Just questions. Amanda Bynes repeatedly spit in the face of a black co-star. You mean she did the thing that she was written to do on the show that she started to? Or that she starred on? And this girl didn't like it? Okay, well then, what do you... That was the joke, is that there was... They're so literal that they do spit takes. Okay. So what do you do? And like, I don't understand why you're mad about it. And then they had the nerve to say that it was racist. Even though she's not the star of the show. If you're not the star and you're an actor, guess what? You can quit anytime you want. And people will, other people will take your place to get spit in the face by Amanda Bynes. Just saying. It's facts. Facts, people. 
And now Drake Bell has a fantastic relationship with his dad. If uh, if nobody noticed in the uh, original series, Drake's dad was like Nostradamus. And was like, this guy, definitely uh, a molester. And he's definitely going to molest my child. Please don't leave him alone with my child. I would appreciate that greatly. And then uh, Drake's mom was like, hey, you, you like my kid, right? You're going to get us some big things someday, right? Go ahead, molest my child. And then the dad, they sent the dad away. And the dad is very emotional, very, cries a lot. But, I, you know, maybe I would cry too <laughs> if this happened to you. Wouldn't you? So basically a giant waste of everyone's time. And I just think it's hilarious that these, um, these, I'm not going to, uh, first of all, they didn't get any comments from anybody other than the Drake Bell reveal that were very interesting. Everything else was like, I didn't see anything. No, Nobody saw nothing. Nobody saw nothing. And the one guy crying about not being molested when he really, really wanted to be molested. Allegedly. So here you have a show where they're talking about exploiting children, yet they re-exploit them to have a fifth episode that they did no planning for because they never expected it to be this popular and or viral. So there you have it, folks. I give them a 10 out of 10 for being scumbag exploiters, and I give them a 2 out of 10 for producing good content. So you make that of what you wish. I recommend you don't watch this because I just gave you all the stuff. Except for it's that's racist. Everything that happened is racist, I think. That was the lesson I learned. Nothing else. So anyway, like and subscribe. Would really appreciate it. We do have a podcast that you would definitely like to listen to because it's on iTunes and it's here live streamed on YouTube. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday nights. It's also on Rumble. You can come join us on any of those you can also join the channel it goes a long way for as little as one dollar a month 12 whole dollars can feed a starving co-host that i may or may not have he's not here currently because he's starving and it's because we can't feed him for as little as 12 dollars a year so anyway thank you for listening do appreciate you um but i'm afraid of getting molested so i'm gonna be on to the next one <laughs>